What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. Today's all about showing the Superflex peoples some love. I am the Superflex peoples. You know, we've done a lot of drafts on Underdog, of course. If you support the brand, you've been drafting on Underdog, but their drafts are one quarterback leagues. And don't you worry, I've been pushing, I have been pushing for them to open up a Superflex spot in the lineup. That would be fantastic. There's literally, that's the only flaw right now, drafting an underdog. But today, we're going to switch gears. And we're going to do a little super flex action on the Sleeper app. I'm going to do a mock draft, 12-teamer, uh, 15, 16 rounds. So for those of y'all that play in two quarterback leagues, super flex leagues, hang tight. For those of y'all that are not doing super flex or two quarterback leagues, I get this question all the time. Why should I switch to super? I had, I literally actually had a, a comment. It was probably one of the most absurd comments I've ever had. Something, I, I think it was like super flex leagues are racist. Um, something, something because like we want more quarterbacks in our lineup because there's more like mobile black quarterback. It was just like the fucking most absurd comment I've ever had before. That is not one of the reasons we like super flex. Okay. We like super flex because it opens up the draft board. It opens up the trade pool, most importantly, and you, you can get values at other positions all over the place. Okay. You might say, Hey, this ruins my draft. It makes the draft fun. It makes you versatile. It makes you fucking dangerous if you know what you're doing. Okay. Same same thing goes with uh, when when people started switching from standard to half PPR and full PPR. What it does is it opens up the draft board, right? In in just regular standard one quarterback leagues, pretty much the only fucking position that was valuable were high end running backs. If you owned one of the top running backs in the league, one quarterback leagues quarterbacks are not valuable. Wide receivers don't matter because they're not fucking scoring points in any sort of non-PPR league. Okay, so it was only running backs. So when you add the PPR type of format into the equation, that opens up more points being scored by the wide receivers and the tight ends. And it also opens up the pool of running backs to more pass-catching running backs. Okay, it's not just the guys who get yards and the guys who score touchdowns. This is what super flex leagues do, okay? You want to talk about your league being boring throughout the middle of the season? This is where more trades come into play, okay? Quarterbacks are exciting quarterbacks are fun to trade for and they have a lot of value so you can have a draft strategy where you go in and take four quarterbacks even though you can only start two of them and guess what good trade bargaining chips because there's only 32 starting quarterbacks in the nfl okay on any given week which means if you're in a 12 team league a 14 team league there's a good chance that on any given week there might be a person that doesn't have a quarterback to start there are bye weeks there are injuries there are busts all right and that's where the trade market gets dicey that's where the trade market gets exciting all right so super flex needs to be part of the discussion for your league committee whenever you guys have your meeting to swap rules swap swap settings increase the engagement in the league super flex is easily the number one way to do that so i would very very highly suggest start fucking around with with the mock drafts that are super flex start playing in real super flex leagues and start convincing your league mates to switch over to super flex it's the only way i can but if, if someone invites me to a one i get invited to dozens of leagues each summer all which i fucking turn down nope uh but if there's a uh, one quarterback setting in it, there's not even a chance. I, I I even I even glance at it, right? I look. I could see the subject line. You could see the description of the email. And if I see one quarterback in there, it's getting fucking thrown in the spam folder, ASAP. All right. Today we're doing a super flex mock draft. Twelve teams. I haven't decided where I'm going to pick from. I'm going to put my little ass in the corner. We're going to maximize this. We are going to throw boom, bang, boom. You could see the draft board. Where do you guys want me to, you know, we'll have a vote for you guys right now. Where do you want me, everyone who's watching right now, everyone who can tell me where they want me to draft from, uh, say it out loud on three. Okay, since I'm the only person that gets to say that because no one's watching me, this is not live, I get to choose where the fuck I'm drafting from. Bro, why do I have so much trouble getting rid of my social handles? Actually, you know what, we could just put that in the corner there. Bing, bang, boom, make sure you're following me on Instagram, on Twitter. That's where you're getting all the annoying shit that I do in my lifetime. Okay, we're going to draft from, uh, what's an interesting spot? I've done a lot of underdogs from the 1. I've done a lot from the 12. Let's go from like the, let's go from the 9. Let's go from the 9. Actually, fuck it. Let's go from the 8, okay? We're going to start the draft. This is all against computers. Honestly, if I did it with you guys in the draft, uh, this shit would, we would just be here all day and nobody's got time for that shit in this economy. <sighs> okay, so this is sleeper ADP and uh, something I've, I've, become privy to and I'm not sure why I'm actually going to pause when it's my picture so I could talk to y'all and just talk about the 
what's happened in the draft prior to me getting on board. Christian McCaffrey, Patrick Mahomes, Kyle Murray, Kyler Murray, Josh Allen, Derrick Henry, Dalvin Cook, Saquon Barkley. So one thing I really didn't notice was just how good Kyler Murray was last year before he got hurt. And I tweeted this out earlier today. And it made me it made me switch my rankings. So I've moved Kyler up to the quarterback two for this upcoming season. Kyler Murray weekly fantasy points totals before hurting the shoulder in week 11. 27.3. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll hide the decimals and I'll just round up or round down, whatever it comes to, so it's not as annoying. 27, 33, 25, 25, 27, 29, 38, 38, 31. Kyler Murray was like absolutely out of his fucking mind in fantasy over the first 10 weeks of the season gets hurt in week 11 and then everything kind of goes to shit but Kyler Murray man I really I don't think I grasped just how good he was in fantasy before he got hurt so with that being said I've been very heavily on the Lamar train uh as my quarterback too I have moved Kyler over Lamar Jackson I expect uh with more weapons there in Arizona another year in Cliff's offense like a healthy Kyler most importantly I I'm very much on board with Kyler Murray so in the first round, my strategy doesn't change much. Like you might be asking, do I need to get a quarterback right away? And typically when we're in these leagues, it doesn't change much in terms of the strategy for other positions like running backs, wide receiver, tight ends. What I try to do is walk away from the first, you know, two to three rounds with my quarterback one. So we'll check who's on the board real quick. We'll see what kind of drop off we have at the quarterback position. So we have Lamar sitting there. I like Lamar. I like Kamara too, so I'm deciding between Kamara and I'm deciding between Lamar. The problem with going Lamar here, going quarterback in the first round, is that the fall off to the running backs are are, are kind of ugly. And I like to have, regardless of if, if it's super flex or not, I like to have my running back spots, at least my first two running back spots, like short up pretty securely. That being said, though, for me, there's a tiny bit of a tear drop off from where we saw Henry Cook and Barkley go down to Kamara. Uh, and I actually think I have Zeke above Kamara, so I'm actually I'm actually gonna do something a little crazy here and probably go with Zeke. I've talked a lot about how much I like Zeke with Dak back on the field this year. Uh, his he was on on pace for like 85 targets last year. He was on pace for over 20 fantasy points per game last year in the five games that Dak started. So I'm not worried about Zeke whatsoever, and I'm drafting him as my RB one securely. Securely. Um, I'm paused. Sorry. Resume draft. Zeke, Zeke. Let me actually change the settings so I can actually fuck that. All right. Kamara, we have Kelsey at 10. Taylor, see, we're seeing a run of running back. So I'm glad, I'm glad I went with a running back there instead of a quarterback. Um, although there was a run of quarterbacks here. Russell Wilson seems super secure here at the 2-5. But I'm going to look back at the running backs and I might double down on running backs. Like, y'all know how much I like Cam Akers. Uh, Aaron Jones, basically the way I'm thinking about Green Bay right now is I'm, I'm pretty sure Aaron, jo Aaron Rodgers is just on a power trip. And I don't even mean that with a negative connotation. Like sometimes power trips are necessary. I think he just wants to show Green Bay, like, listen, I fucking run this franchise. You guys think you got power. You want to fucking belittle me. You want to bully me on live television. Fuck that. I will, I will make you sweat every single night in your fucking satin bed sheets. You know, your wife will never want to have sex with you again because your your bed sheets are just wet and disgusting. That's what Aaron Rodgers is, is thinking right now. So he's going to take his vacation. He'll come back whenever the fuck he wants to, okay? And I am very, very uh, securely in the mindset that Aaron Rodgers will be back, which makes guys like Devontae Adams, which makes guys like Aaron Jones more, uh, more, more of a sexy pick. So it begs the question... Aaron Jones or Cam Akers for me. I'm going to go with another uh, another running back because I still think I'm, I'm going to be fine with quarterback later on in the third round. What do you guys like here? Let me know in the comments. You got Aaron Jones, Cam Akers. I think that's going to be a nice a nice little fat decision to make this offseason. I think uh, I, was, I was working on my top 100 Superflex rankings this morning right before this draft, and I moved Aaron Jones with the assumption that Rodgers is going to be back up to... I can't remember. It was it was it was right behind this top six of running backs here. I think it was Aaron Jones as the seven and Cam Akers as the eight. So we'll stay true to that. We'll run with Aaron Jones here. So we got Zeke and Elliot. Or Zeke and uh, Aaron Jones. We'll see what kind of quarterbacks run off the board. 
I like that Sleeper's ADP actually does like a little bit of a tear drop off. Like they actually know what they're doing here. All right, so we're bike on the clock, and I know a lot of you guys probably like Clyde. Like, I wouldn't even hate going with three running backs off the rip. Um, and I, I'll i tell you what. I'll tell you what. Aaron Rodgers, Jalen Hurts both look good right here. I will go with Aaron Rodgers here and just secure my quarterback one, and I'm going to feel good about it. Now, how many, how many quarterbacks do we want to be drafting, and how early do we want to be drafting? Here's the other thing to, to understand about quarterbacks in Superflex League. While, yes, they are extremely valuable, this is an, ex- this is a, an important point, okay? They're extremely valuable because of their positional scarcity, but the reason that late round quarterback became a thing, became a philosophy in fantasy football was because basically after the top tier of quarterbacks, there's there's not a big gap in terms of fantasy points per game. Okay. So you need to keep that in mind when you're drafting super flex leagues as well. Okay. So there's not a huge difference between who's left on the board at quarterback and who you'll be able to get on the board at quarterback in two rounds, in three rounds, okay? So I like Jalen Hurts more than consensus, so Jalen Hurts would be a great pick here, obviously. But if Jalen Hurts wasn't there, there's not necessarily a quarterback I love. Let's say, like, you know, Tannehill. Uh, how many more points per game is he actually going to score than a guy like Kirk Cousins or a guy like even Daniel Jones, who you can get two to three rounds later? So keep that in mind when you're drafting Superflex. While you do want to have a really st- uh, solid, steady quarterback one, once the top guys, like if you miss out on the top guys, like I did with Mahomes, Kyler, Josh Allen, Dak, Lamar, Herbert, if you want to put Russell Wilson into that tier, and I'm glad I got Aaron Rodgers. I feel like he was the last of the elite quarterbacks kind of in fantasy right now. If you miss out on those guys, securing the next like three guys at the quarterback position are not like a huge, huge priority. It shouldn't be a huge priority for you. Okay. So grab a solid QB one, grab another. Okay. QB two. And then you can grab a third quarterback before you leave. I wouldn't go crazy, especially if there are workhorse running backs still available on the board, which there are not. We could start looking at wide receivers. Uh, who's left at tight end. No one left the tight end. That gets me, gets me hot and heavy at the tier break. Now, because there are no good running backs left, my inclination is to choose between Jalen Hurts and Keenan Allen. Now, I've heard this point being thrown around a lot this summer, and this was something I would write about in the Big Dogs Bible, which is in our draft guide each year. This is something I've been talking about for like two or three years now. The difference between drafting quarterbacks in one quarterback league versus super flex leagues is that you shoot for upside and only upside in one quarterback leagues, right? You could you could wait late round quarterback and you could wait and draft like a Trey Lance. You can draft like a Kirk Cousins and a Trey Lance, right? And get those guys in like the 10th, 12th, 13th round. You only want to shoot for one quarterbacks that have upside, okay? That's why Trey Lance is like the perfect pick. Justin Fields, perfect pick. Guys like that who have running upside, Daniel Jones, perfect pick. Uh, because if they don't hit, guess what? You could just hit the waiver wire and grab somebody else. That's the beauty of drafting one quarterback leagues. You could completely shoot for upside. In super flex leagues, you kind of want safety, right? You don't want risky, right? The more upside a quarterback has, the later he is in drafts with the more upside, the riskier he probably is. That's why he's going later in drafts with that type of upside. They have that type of upside and they're going early in drafts. It's probably because their floor is pretty safe too. So when you're in super flex leagues, typically I would tell you that you want to draft for uh, safety at your quarterback two spot. With all that being said though, I really like Keenan Allen. I don't know if I love him for half PPR though, so I'll probably I'll probably sit this one out at the wide receiver position and go with Jalen Hurts because that's my guy this year. Y'all know I love this man, and I'll be grafting a ton of Jalen Hurts stock. Listen, there's been a lot of research, there's been a lot of studies done on super flex leagues and drafting. And, and the same principle pretty much holds, man. You want to be going running backs. You want to be going quarterbacks early. There's no positional scarcity at wide receiver. They don't have advanced scoring. The top end of the position does not outscore the bottom, uh, you know, the lower wide receiver one. Same for wide receiver two to the bottom wide receiver twos. It just doesn't make sense to go with wide receivers early um, in, in these leagues. Okay, so we're sitting here at the 5-8. And... The, the tight ends are gone that I'd want. The wide receivers are sitting there. I I really like Amari Cooper this year. It's not a stack or anything, but I don't really like anyone else at wide receiver. So looking back on it, what I could have done was went with Keenan Allen. Here's my wide receiver one, or even a Chris Carson. I didn't realize I, f- I forgot Chris Carson was on the board, but I could have went with a Keenan Allen or Chris Carson here and then got Tannehill down at the 5A. And that's what I'm talking about. There's not really a huge drop off from the guys you can get two to three rounds later when we're when we're talking about the quarterback twos. So I will grab Amari Cooper uh, in the fifth round. I really like him. I think him and Dak just have a great, great natural chemistry. And uh, if, if Cooper can stay on the field, which has you know been a problem for him for a long time, I uh, I think he'll make some magic this year. So 
I'm glad I got Cooper there because we just saw a little bit of a run with the wide receivers. And let's look back at the running backs. So now we're kind of getting into not necessarily flex range because I guess we got to grab another wide receiver. But here's where I would start to look at. Maybe you do go with the Ryan Tannehill. Maybe you do go with um, I, I do have Ryan Tannehill a pretty solid tier above the rest of these guys. So you might grab him and then uh, use him as trade bait. OK, the other thing to take into consideration when it comes to super flex leagues is your league size. OK, the bigger your league is, the more important it is to get your quarterbacks and get them early. OK, the small if you're in a 10 team league or an 18 league. It's not that important. Super flex leagues are not that important to be securing a bunch of quarterbacks. Even in 10 team leagues, like I'm the E-Town get down is a 10 team league. Even in that league, you can grab quarterbacks on the on the on the waiver wire. Uh, it's it's very possible. And it's very likely even if they're like quarterback 25, 26, 27, they're still usable in your super flex spots and they're going to give you a floor of 14 points a week. All right. And that's better than anything you're going to get as your sixth best skill player. So the smaller the league, the less important it is for you to be jumping up to grab your second and third quarterbacks. The high end quarterbacks still make a big difference no matter what size the, the league is. But you don't have to be going nuts about grabbing your third quarterback. So if you're in a 12 team league, Ryan Tannehill, probably not a bad pick here. Uh, but because I went with Jalen Hurts, I don't really need a third quarterback, and we could still wait like three rounds and get a Ryan Fitzpatrick or Derek Carr or whatever it is as my quarterback three. So we'll do that. Uh, there's no running backs that really jump off the screen to me here. I do actually like Mike Davis a lot in the sixth round. I didn't realize he was sitting there. Let me see what else we got going on. Eh, not a big tier jump up here. I wish I had more confidence in the San Francisco passing offense. I would love to, to snag Brandon Ayuk here. Robert Woods, I don't hate either. You know, I talked about Robert Woods in my last video uh, whether or not I thought people were sleeping on him. I, I don't think people are sleeping on him. Like he's going around wide receiver 18 to 20 and he's finished right there in terms of points per game and basically every single year. Uh, so he doesn't really have a lot of upside this year with Stafford though. That is the only reason why I, you could probably change your tune on him a little bit. I think Stafford's going to elevate that offense to a, uh, to a really, really, um, really, really successful place. So I, I don't hate Robert Woods here. So I'm probably actually going to grab my second tight end, or my second wide receiver in Woods and feel feel solid about it. And we'll see if I, I – normally in a regular draft, I might have went with Mike Davis there. I was hoping that he fell back to me, but he didn't. And we didn't see a run of quarterback, so I'm glad that I faded Tannehill there. I'm actually glad I took Robert Woods. There's not, you know, there's not a, a lot of great, great wide receivers left. But at this point in the draft, we don't have a lot of upside at running back. I really like uh, nobody at tight end. I really like Damian Harris, man. I can't believe he's all the way down here at 112. It makes no fucking sense to me. It really makes absolutely no sense. Damian Harris, Trey Sermon, I like I like both those guys as pretty high upside uh, running backs here. So we're, we're getting to like the wide receiver three territory where, listen, wide receiver threes in fantasy football literally make no difference. They, they don't move the needle at all. So the only way you're looking at wide receiver threes, here, here's like, I put a TikTok. You got fucking, first of all, like the, the kids on TikTok are absolutely savage. I have no fucking respect for anything. I put one take out. I actually made a YouTube short about this a couple weeks ago. Actually, it was like a couple days ago where I said, uh, who you draft at your wide receiver two doesn't matter. Right. And I made the point that the points per game difference at wide receiver two compared to other wide receiver twos is so, so, so minuscule. The point being, and then there was everybody like, what if you drafted Stefan Diggs and DK Metcalf is your wide receiver two? The point being is you don't know who the wide receiver two, like, that that is more of a, a point towards the fact that nobody fucking knows anything about actual player analysis, right? When you are drafting between you're on the clock, right? And you're like, oh, should I take Jerry Judy or Debo Samuel here? Right? Realistically, you have a 50-50 chance of picking the right player of who scores more fantasy points this year. Yes, the obvious answer for most people will be like Jerry Judy. He's the more exciting player. People are more excited for him. But if their ADP is right next to each other, the chance of you picking the right player realistically is a fucking coin flip. So the point being is that you don't actually know, right, when you're saying like, oh, yeah, Stefan Diggs. Yeah, for everybody that drafted Stefan Diggs, 75 people drafted DJ Chark, right? It was 50-50. It was Stefan Diggs or it was DJ Chark in the sixth round last year. So you guys are saying like, yeah, if you draft, like, like, yes, the point being is you don't actually know which of the players is right. So the fact that you're going to go into it being like, I know I'm picking the right guy is the wrong mindset. It's more from going from a st strategic standpoint. Like we know where the percentages lie in our favor. And that being said, like you want to shoot for more 
Like even if DJ Chark as a wide receiver three returns wide receiver two value, that doesn't move the needle in fantasy football. But if you draft a guy like Trey Sermon, or if you draft like Trey Sermon hits, right, and becomes the, the RB1 for San Francisco, that fucking absolutely moves the needle for you. You know what I'm saying? Like that is a, that is a, a league winning move for you, okay? Wide receivers don't do that for you. And that's why we're going to go with Trey Sermon here as my RB3. Y'all get what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? All right, cool. So Jerry Judy's still on the board and available for us. So we're going to throw him in the queue. He's probably the last of the wide receiver threes that I like right here. Damian Harris in the queue. Tannehill's still sitting there, huh? I feel like I should take Tannehill. I feel like I really... If this was a real live draft, I would probably take Tannehill here and then try to move him in a trade because the value of Tannehill versus the value of these skill players is just so different. So I'm going to go with a third quarterback here. I'm going to take Tannehill. I'll be able to find another wide receiver that I like. Man, not even starting off a quarterback run. I thought that was going to make things pop. Well, I was going to make pop, 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 pop. There we go. There's the quarterbacks running, running amok. Let's go. Let's go. Is that considered starting a run because there's 75 fucking picks behind me? Definitely not. Okay, see, the running backs are getting ugly. The running backs are getting ugly. I'm glad I got my two top guys all the way up there. And then we're sitting here and we're like, okay, who do we like as a wide receiver three or a tight end? Um, Cooks, ah, yeah, the, it, it looks more and more like Deshaun Watson's not going to play. I'm pretty sure the Vegas odds actually just changed from whatever it was to like plus 900 for Deshaun Watson to play this year. So there's a very, very high chance that Deshaun Watson does not play, um, does not play in 2021, which means you really don't want many pieces of the Houston offense. Not that you fucking wanted it regardless, but at least Brandon Cooks would have been spicy in the 10th round had Deshaun Watson been there. Uh, Curtis Samuel is a guy that I've kind of been fading a lot of. Uh, I just don't really fuck with his play style. I don't like low volume players that we need to rely on being like a good gadget player and Ron Rivera just like never used him the right way in Carolina. So I don't love him there. Uh, Jarvis Landry, I feel like is going to be fine this year. I feel like he's going to be pretty good with Baker. This is all around. is going to be a good offense. Like I know they're much more like run first and run heavy, but just give me, you know, give me pieces at least like he has a very real chance of being the wide receiver one in Cleveland. Like fuck OBJ. Uh, I like Michael Gallup a lot, too. It would have been really nice to have gotten Dak. That way I could have went with Dak, Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup. Um, who do we like as wide receiver three here? Let me know who you guys like. I actually love Antonio Brown. I'm going to take Antonio Brown here. I didn't even realize he was still available. We can go with Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown splits. When he was healthy and on the field last year, the target share between him, Evans, and Godwin were virtually virtually like identical. It's actually kind of wild. All right, so there you saw the other big quarterback run. So we've got our three quarterbacks. And in a real league, like you're looking at a lot of teams that won't have a second quarterback. Like Trevor Lawrence, these guys right here, teams one, two, three, only have one quarterback. Team six only has one quarterback. So you'll be able to move. This guy has three RB1s, which I think is a great draft so far. Cook, Akers, Mixon. You might be able to move like... You know, if, if Jalen Hurts has a big game, move Jalen Hurts for Cam Akers plus, right? Or, or Jalen Hurts for Cam Akers straight up, and then you can use Tannehill in your second quarterback spot, right? And that's that's kind of a juicy spot to be in. Uh, running backs, I like Zach Moss a lot. I, I think Zach Moss has a very real chance to be a player in Buffalo this year. Another another offense you just want a piece of. Another offense you just absolutely want a piece of. I think he has real upside and a, and a pretty solid floor. So we'll go with Zach Moss there because, listen, like, Again, if Zach Moss hits his ceiling, it's big time. If Curtis Samuel, Jarvis Landry hits a, hits their ceilings, doesn't do shit for you in fantasy, realistically. So they all took their second quarterback. Team one's got two rookie quarterbacks. Team two has Mahomes, but risky Daniel Jones. Team three also a little bit risky with Tua. So I still think there will be there there there's bargaining pieces there to be had. I like Gus Edwards here too, and I might even I might even fuck around. I know people. People are so corny with the handcuff lines. Like, don't draft someone else. Don't draft your own handcuffs. Draft someone else's. Honestly, I wouldn't even fucking mind taking A.J. Dillon here just to back up Aaron Jones. You know no matter what happens to 
the Green Bay backfield, no matter what injuries happen, you have an RB1 in your lineup secured. Like a lot of people, you know, you do shoot for upside, but like having safety in season long leagues is also really important because all you got to do is get into the playoffs, right? If you just need to be one of four teams or one of six teams, safety is kind of fucking important. You don't need to be the first place. This is not a tournament field. You don't need to be first place in order just to make the playoffs. Okay. So we're sitting here at 11. Um, Tyler Higby at tight end. I kind of like. Same thing with Jonu Smith. I've been rising on Jonu Smith pretty rapidly. I just, I don't know. I just feel like Bill Belichick loves Jonu Smith, and Jonu Smith is so athletic. I feel like they're really, really, they've always valued players who have a lot of versatility, and, like, who better than Jonu Smith? So I like Jonu. Um, Let's see what else we like here. I like Mike Williams. I like Darnell Mooney. I like Elijah Moore. We like A.J. Dillon. We like Gus Edwards. I don't really like anybody else. I did take Zeke as well, so like these two handcuffs are not bad picks. I don't really want to use earlier that early round picks on guys when I still probably need to shore up an actual starting position in my lineup. Also, the smaller your league is, the more important it is to um, to have a really strong starting lineup. Like, Don't start picking depth pieces before you have a full starting lineup in there. So we're, we're going to take our first tight end here, and we will take, you know, I, I'm not a huge, huge fan of Tyler Higby, but a lot of smart people that I trust in the industry are very high on Tyler Higby. So I will diversify the revenue as always and listen to those smart people because I'm while I'm really smart and I have a really fucking big brain, every once in a while I'm wrong. Every once in a while I'm wrong. There you go. I'm glad I went with Higby because the tight end run started, and now we still have a couple players. You know, I'll, I'll feel good about it, and I'll secure my, uh, my Tony Pollard chair just to make sure I do have that high-end RB1 no matter what happens. Because I already have most positions pretty securely squared away here. Let's look at the let's look at the roster. Let's look at the roster for a minute. Okay, so we've got uh let me pause this for a sec. So we have Aaron Rodgers and Jalen Hurts as our two quarterbacks in the Superflex League. We have Zeke, Aaron Jones. We have Amari Cooper, Robert Woods, and then our flex spots. We'll need to get some lucky points probably out of uh, Sermon, Antonio Brown. Who else did I take? Zach Moss. Um, Zach Moss, Tony Pollard. So I think between I think between Zach Moss, Antonio Brown, Trey Sermon. Uh, we'll we'll be fine starting a flex play. And again, I do have Ryan Tannehill on the bench, so I could stream quarterbacks, which makes that position just that much stronger. Or I could move, I can I could easily move Tannehill for for a wide receiver two or um or an RB two or whatever, and use them in the flex spot as well. So I gave my team some versatility with that third quarterback pick. All right, let's go back to drafting. Resume draft. Put my ass over here. There we go. And who do you guys like that's left here? I would like Amon Ross St. Brown a lot. Um, there are, the running back situation is disgusting. Other handcuffs I don't really hate are... Uh, are Madison because Dalvin Cooks had that shoulder injury every year, and that's like a statistically proven thing by the doctors on Twitter that each time you each time you dislocate that shoulder, you have a higher percentage chance of dislocating it again. Um, so while I don't love Alexander Madison much, I do think there's a pretty high percentage chance that Dalvin Cook misses some time with that shoulder again. Uh, Chuba Hubbard is just a guy that'll be a three down back if C-Mac gets hurt. Uh, what else do we like? Yeah, that's really it. I kind of like Darrell, uh, Darrell Williams as a sneaky handcuff to Clyde over to Lair, but this is probably where I'll just stack up some wide receivers. Miko Harmon getting a lot of buzz as being the wide receiver two in KC. Amon Ross, St. Brown, y'all know I like him. I think the slot is just completely open to be the leading wide receiver target getter there. Paris Campbell making some noise. Yeah, this is kind of ugly. I'll probably go Miko Harmon because I think his upside is probably a little bit higher than Amon Ross, St. Brown right now, but maybe I can get both of them. We'll see. Again, because this is why this is why it's fine to like just just absolutely stack up on wide receivers at the end of the draft because whoever you get as your wide receiver three, the difference in points per game is just so minuscule that it's not actually going to fucking matter if you just play the same guys every week. 
right, so we'll go Miko. Come on, I'm on. Ah, you fucking cunt. Jalen Rager. Is this where we do the is this where we stack? Is this where we fucking do Jalen Hurts? Uh Jalen Hurts, Jalen Rager, a little Jalen to Jalen action. Gotta do it. Throw your J's up. Happy Kwanzaa. I'm kind of hoping, uh, ah, damn, I wanted Gerald Everett to fold to me, actually. I was going to take a second tight end just because Higby, while you could feel pretty good about it, um, who actually knows what the fuck happens with him, right? Any t any tight end after, like, the first five or a fucking absolute crapshoot, but there's no one I really like still left on the board, so whatever. We'll roll with uh, probably another wide receiver, Denzel Mims, John Brown. I think John Brown has a pretty good chance of being the one there in Las Vegas, so I don't hate that pick. Every running back left absolutely stinks. Did I get Damian Harris? No, I didn't. I missed out on Damian Harris. We'll go with John Brown here, and that will round us out. What quarterbacks are left? See, this this would never happen in a real super flex league. Like people would take a second and third quarterback, or a third quarterback to make sure that they're okay at the position. Um, but here we are. So let's round it out with Johnny B. That's the final team, dog. That's the final team. Let's look at the final draft board. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what uh what team you think is the GOAT on this draft board right now. I actually really like how my team turned out. I'm not like too crazy about, you know, wide receivers, as you could obviously fucking tell by everything I've said for the last 30 minutes. Um, but I think it was a really strong start with Zeke, Aaron Jones, Aaron Rodgers, Jalen Hurts. Obviously, this depends on Aaron Rodgers coming back, but I'm pretty fucking sure he will be. So... Uh, what other teams do we like here? Don't like, I uh, don't love team one. That's eh, not bad, I guess, but I wouldn't, I just don't want Kittle in the second round. I think it's a shitty pick. Team two is an interesting strategy, kind of faded running backs. I mean, Davis and Javante, if they hit, obviously he's got a super strong team. It's a good stack of wide receivers there with Patrick Mahomes, of course, to anchor it. Mike Kosicki stinks. Team three just went out of control with the wide, with the wide receivers. Your RB one is David Johnson. Your 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 ceiling this this in this league is is the tenth 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 place. That's it. Team four. I don't necessarily love David Montgomery. Eh, it's like a well rounded team. I just I just don't really like it. It just doesn't do it for me. Team five sneaky good. They pro actually I don't think they missed I don't think they missed on any picks. I think that's just a solid all around team up until probably Kenyon Drake. But uh, Henry and Gibson and Edmonds as your first three running backs. Tyreek Hill, Godwin, and Galladay as your first three wide receivers. Probably would have liked this. Uh, ah, Burrow and Mayfield are, are not bad, man. Burrow down at 4'8", and a super flex is pretty pretty sexy. So that's a pretty well-rounded team, in my opinion. Team 6 went with 4. I would definitely would have pivoted from Josh Jacobs there and taken the wide receiver 1. Like, if Team 6 went with Keenan Allen instead of Josh Jacobs, they would be... They would be pretty fucking beautiful there. Like, there's no reason to go with six running backs off the rip, especially if three of them are Jacobs, Robinson, and Gordon. Like, there's no need for that that much fucking fatness on your roster. Seven. Ah, we're not going to go through every team, but uh, some of the teams are okay. Some of the teams are okay, and then, then, then there's mine, which is in the elite tier. All right, y'all. That's it. Uh, if you have any questions about your Superflex League, your draft, whatever, you want me to send you a fucking personal cameo yelling at your league mates to switch into a Superflex League, we could do that for you, okay? Just drop a comment down below. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. And make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new. We'll see you later with our shorts at 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. Dropping two shorts a day, 5 p.m. 9 p.m. every single day for the rest of our lives. Love you. Goodbye.